Hi guys, Ramsey here. Uh, welcome to uh, another video and today we have a, another family portrait. Uh, first of all, before I get started showing you the uh, fragrances, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has uh, helped correct me along my uh, eBay technical journey. Um, thank you for all the uh, tips and tricks telling me how to you know, make sure you list all the fragrances and stuff like that. So that's greatly appreciated. You'll learn over this time that uh, I am a te techno technological luddite. Uh, but uh, that being said, uh, I'm, I'm doing this in one take, as you can also see. So hopefully it's a little conversational uh, when I watch these fragrance videos. That's the kind of uh, content that I want. Fancy graphics and top 10 lists. You know, they don't really do anything for me. So take that. Uh, for what it will be. So first fragrance is going to be a decant. And by the way, this is the House of Guerlain, uh, one of my favorite uh, fragrance houses. This is not going to be as long as some of the other videos, though. Uh, I do have a lot, but I also have a lot of backup bottles. Um, but first, let's start with a decant, one that I uh, recently acquired. It's a fragrance called Guerlain Metallica. And they actually had to change the name of this fragrance to Metalis, uh, because they got sued by the band, believe it or not. Um, and uh, this fragrance came out in uh, 2000. Jean-Paul Guerlain was the, uh, was the perfumer. And uh, this is a beautiful floral uh, vanilla. No one does vanilla like, uh, like Guerlain. It does have uh, a note of carnation, so it is a little bit old school for the year 2000. But it has these uh, spices. The the Lang Lang is very prominent in this. Uh, it is a little bit feminine, but um, if you like some of the other vanilla heavy Guerlains I'm going to show you later, uh, like Shalimar, this is one that is uh, hard to find nowadays. You know, this is a 10 ml decant, so when you have a collection like mine, that's probably enough to uh, to get you by. Okay, next is going to be Jiki. And Jiki is one of the first fragrances to use modern synthetics, according to the, to the uh, write-up. Uh, this was created by Amy Guerlain. Uh, and um, I'm going to show you one after this that I actually prefer wearing a little bit more. Um, uh, but uh, this was originally issued in 1889. So this goes way, way back. Uh, it is um, it is a fougere, and uh, if you if you listen to uh, you know past Guerlain's speak, uh, they say this is one of the only real fougeres out there, along with um, fougere royale. So um, definitely an old school fragrance, not for everyone. It does have this halitosis note that tends to turn people off, uh, but it's got rosemary. Uh, rose, uh, it's got um, the heavier notes in the base, vanilla, tonka, woody, woody notes. I hate fragrantica, woody notes. Uh, but it's that lavender that uh, rounds it out and, and makes it a true fougere. So that's uh, Jiki. And this is the Eau de Parfum, by the way. And as you can see, my bottle uh, is a tester bottle because I don't care about presentation. I'm not taking pictures and putting them on Instagram. I'm, I'm worried about the juice, and I want to stretch my dollar as far as it will go. So you'll notice with a lot of these, I either don't have the full presentation, um, or, you know, I have a recharge or something like that. I don't care, because for me, it's it's all about the juice. So next is Jiki's Twin, which is, uh, I believe, recently discontinued, or you have to fly to Paris or something crazy to buy it. It's a uh, Mouchoir de Monsieur, and uh, this is um, a couple years later. This is made by Jacques Guerlain in 1904, the first proper masculine. I think the um, write-up, because apparently what ended up happening is men were wearing Jiki, uh, and uh, Jacques Guerlain made this for one of his best mates uh, for his wedding. And uh, where, where, where Jacques was the uh, best man. So he made this specifically for him. Uh, still, a, still a fougere, uh, in, my, in my opinion. Uh, and what they used to do in the old days 
The reason that this is called mouchoir de monsieur is they would actually spray their handkerchiefs and uh, you know, keep it in their pockets throughout the night, and then at the end of the night, whenever they liked, if they liked a girl or something, they would give them the handkerchief, and, you know, the girl could remember them by that handkerchief. So, again, that's very old school, um, but I actually really enjoy wearing this one a little bit more than, than Jicky. It just tones down that halitosis feel, you know, there's still civet. I still probably wouldn't wear this in 100 degree heat, but, uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever it may be, I, I can still rock this. Um, I'm very glad to have this. It's getting harder and harder to find. Um, this is a 2016 bottle, I believe, but um, Mouchoir de Monsieur is number three. Number four uh, is one that I really struggle with. Uh, if you watch Eugene's channel, this is one of his favorite fragrances of all time. And as you can see, this is a recharge bottle. That's why it doesn't look all fancy. Um, but it's L Lore Blue. Um, and Lore Blue is, this is the Eau de Parfum, by the way. Uh, and, uh, this is a fragrance that is heavy on the florals. Um, the florals in this are just ridiculous, reading it across. Heliotope, Carnation, Violet, Neroli, Lang Lang, Bulgarian Rose, Jasmine, Orchid, uh, Tuberose, Iris. I mean, it just... It feels like a giant violet is what it feels like to me when I wear this. Um, it is heavy, heavy, heavy on me. The Eau de Parfum anyways. I hear, I, you'll notice that on a lot of these Guerlain's. I actually prefer the Eau de Toilettes. Uh, I think they just have a little bit more room to breathe. So maybe I should give the Eau de Toilette a try. But uh, this is one that I really struggle with. Um, I, I would probably just give it to my wife, but I don't think she would even wear it. So I'll, I'll stick with it and spray it from time to time and kind of see if my nose ever, you know, comes along, matures enough where I can appreciate something like this. It's not my style, but I can appreciate for it for what it is. The, the Blue Hour, Lore Blue. Okay, next is another uh, very old school fragrance, one of the famous Guerlains of the past. This is Val de Nuit. And you'll see this is an older bottle. They don't make this bottle any longer. Um, and this is the Eau de Toilette, which I prefer. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit airier. Um, the propeller bottle is absolutely gorgeous. If you, um, look on Eugene's channel, you can see, you know, he's got the, the parfum that he's shown in, in older videos from years past, but this has the galbanum at the top, galbanum at the top, uh, narcissus and spices in the mid, and then it has that beautiful iris vanilla, you know, um, Guerlainade in, in the base. And um, this is another one that uh, is not really my style. I really appreciate it for what it is. This is the definition, you know, these are the definitions of fine French perfumery, you could say. It's just not really my thing. Um, I will whip them out every now and then just because I do really appreciate the classics. But uh, Val de Nuit, glad to have it. It's only a little 30 ml bottle, but... This is probably enough to last me a lifetime, and it's the older formulation. Okay, next. Next is uh, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Chifre of all time. It's uh, Mitsuko. And again, this is the Eau de Parfum. This is the heavier version. Uh, this one I actually do prefer in the Eau de Parfum. I've smelled the Eau de Toilette. And um, it is it is nice. It's a little bit lighter. I like the heavier version of uh, of Mitsuko. I don't have a cap, as you can see. Guerlain always does the most beautiful um, touches on their bottle. There's the B, the famous Guerlain B. Um, and this is the uh, the first fruity chiffre ever created by Jacques Guerlain in 1919, I believe. Um, I, I love Schieffer's is actually one of my favorite categories. Um, this has a, a famous note of peach in it. Uh, and I, I do have a confession to make. I, as much as I love Mitsuko, I think I enjoy Diaghilev a little bit more. Uh, I know this is a Guerlain video, but, uh, why, um, what better time to bring up Roja Dove, who used to work for Guerlain. And the rumor is a lot of his fragrances are based on uh, on Guerlain fragrances of past. So this is, uh, inspired by Mitsuko, you could say. And, and this is one that, um, 
it really amps up those dirty notes in the opening, the civet, um, you know, the castorium. It's it's dirtier, it's mossier, it's just I just I, I prefer this actually. Is it worth a thousand dollars a bottle? <sighs> Probably not, unless you're a serious enthusiast. The best bang for your buck is forty bucks for um for right, you know, modern Mitsuko. Terry Vassar does a great job keeping these classics alive. Um, but if you're a big fan and you want to almost smell what Mitsuko might smell like with the best materials money can buy, Diagolev, my favorite Shifra of all time. Okay, next is, in my opinion, maybe one of the greatest fragrances of all time. And it is Shalimar. This is Shalimar. And um, I have a couple different formulations of this that I'll show you. This is the modern uh, Eau de Parfum, if you can see that. And uh, this is the Parfum de Toilette from 1988, or late 80s, let's say. I don't know if it was 88 or 89. But uh, basically, Parfum de Toilette was just basically a fancy way of them saying Eau de Parfum in the 80s before they really, before they really you know, segregated the Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, and everyone started using the same uh, verbiage. You can see Guerlain right here, and this, this opens up and, you know, this is a recharge, just like, uh, just like this is. It's basically just a recharge that fits inside of this, um, you know, fancy gold casing. The Shalimar is uh, all about bergamot, uh, in the top, and it's all about uh, vanilla, incense in the base, and then it has civet. Um, and uh, this is uh, probably one of my favorite vanilla type scents, you could say, right up there with um, uh, Creed's Venezia, which I discovered this year and talked about on my Creed uh, video. If you like Shalimar, Venezia is one to definitely check out. And then I also picked up from Enchante the... Um, the Parfum, the x straight, which I showed off uh, during one of the haul videos. And um, this is more floral. If, um, you know, if you're a woman and you're looking for something a little bit more floral, I think this is only a 7.5 or a 10 ml uh, that I got from him. But um, if you are looking for, you know, Shalimar with a, a more floral touch and you can afford, you know, paying more for less juice, or you want something for a special occasion, uh, the Parfum, the X-Ray, is, uh, is a floral take, in my opinion. The iris in this is beautiful. Okay, moving on. Next is one of the greatest masculines ever created. It's the first fragrance ever created by Jacques Guerlain, and it's uh, Vetiver from 1959. This is the frosted bottle. This uh, bottle is discontinued now. And uh, this is a 75 ml, back when they used to have five-digit batch codes, as you can see there. Uh, and this is uh, vetiver and tobacco and nutmeg, basically, with that lemon top. I wear this in summer. Um, and this is one that I actually struggle with, believe it or not. I like the fragrance. Uh, I appreciate it for what it is. But... Um, for some reason, just that it's so bright and it's so green, uh, it just feels like you're, you know, sitting outside on a green hill somewhere, just enjoying the hearing the birds tweet and you know the the trees sway and it's it just has that outdoorsy feel to it to me. And um, I'm usually inside working, talking on the phone uh, with clients and stuff, and so this is um, it's hard for me to appreciate. I you know. Honestly, I'd much rather wear uh, something like uh, Mitsuko, Shalimar, some of the others that are coming up. But uh, this is a great reference uh, vetiver and um, one of the best masculines ever, ever released. The older bottles uh, do have a little bit more of that uh, funk to them, I think. I think the newer bottles are a little bit more streamlined. So if you can find an older bottle... You know, and 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 you and you're willing to pay triple, four times what the new bottles are going for. Go for it. If not, I think the new formulation is just fine. I've never smelled Vetiver Extreme, which is a flanker of this, but um, I hear it's quite good. Next, 
Next is one of my favorite Guerlains to actually wear. I don't think it's one of the, the best Guerlains ever, but it, it just happens to be one of my favorite Guerlains to wear. This is Songe Dumboite. And Songe is basically re repackaged into a fragrance that's now called Bois Mysterio. I guess Songe Dumboite de Ate was just too hard for people to say French French people's ears are bleeding all over the place after hearing me butcher that but we'll just say Sanj from here on out um if you look this is basically Terry Vosser's Middle Eastern creation he went to the Middle East the story is he went to the Middle East one day you know a decade ago they challenged him and said you Frenchmen don't know how to make perfumes in the Arabic style and this is what he came up with um and this is a, uh, this, this fragrance is a resinous, balsamic fragrance that has this saffron bay leaf feel to it. They say there's oud in it. I get no oud, doesn't mean it's not there. They can use oud in a number of different ways. It can be used as a base. Um, you know, it, sometimes you won't even notice that oud is there. But if you view this as more of a leather fragrance when you actually wear it, um, I think you'll get a little bit closer to the truth of the matter. I view this as a leather and, um, a leather with resins, balsams, myrrh, uh, myrrh, saffron, bay, that bay leaf note is amazing. It's also in Jubilation 25, that bay leaf note. And it just adds this, you know, to this, um, to this Arabic style, it adds this great twist that I, that I absolutely adore. So, uh, this is Songe. We'll just say Songe. Um, this or Bois Mysterio. I hear the reformulation is quite good. Uh, I can't vouch for it. You'll notice again, tester, no cap. I don't care. Um, I wanted the juice and uh, very glad to have this in my collection. And the bottle is stunning. It's uh, I, I miss these bottles. You know, the new version of the B bottles that I'll show you here later. Um, are nice, but but I love these bottles. Next, next is one of the another one of the greatest masculines ever released, and I'll show you two versions. This is Habi Rouge. Habi Rouge. Um, basically, this is uh, uh, Jean Paul Guerlain's take on a masculine version of Shalimar. It came about, um, you know, if you look at the red on this, it's supposed to symbolize the uh, hunting jackets that, you know, expert hunters were given in England after they reached a certain level, but it does have this benzoin, um, amber, you know, it has this powdery feel. You will be reminded of Shalimar sometimes, uh, but then it has this citruses at the top. Um, and I actually have an older bottle. You can kind of see the difference in how the older bottle looked versus the newer. I think this one is even older now. I don't think they do this bottle even anymore. Uh, I think it's changed to the basic uh, Listerine type bottle um, with maybe a different cap or something. But um, this is just a little bit more animalic, the older one. This is a, this is a little bit more clean, but actually I, I love wearing them both. Uh, I got a great deal on this because it's a splash, and some people don't like decanting these into atomizers. I don't really care. I'll just carry the atomizer around with me. But this has a glorious note of carnation. Um, carnation, and then in the, in the top, it has this uh, lemon and Brazilian rosewood. That Brazilian rosewood note really stands out to me um, in, this, in this fragrance in the top. So it has this... Uh, Brazilian Rosewood has this very particular uh, smell to it, uh, and uh, uh, Habi Rouge is one of the greatest masculines of all time, in my opinion. A woman could probably easily pull this off, uh, but uh, this is a proper masculine, and even though it's probably the best-selling Guerlain ever in France for men, uh, most people outside of France do not know about this fragrance, so if you're wearing Habi Rouge, you know, this is, um, and don't worry about smelling like your father or grandfather. Uh, this is what, uh, this is what real men, real men smelled like before the crazy notes we talked about the other day, caramel and pralines and stuff like that. But speaking of pralines, 
I do have a bottle here that uses the note of praline. Terry Vosser created this that I actually like, one of the very, very few. It's Happy Rouge Dress Code. And this is a 2017 bottle. Every year they change the bottle. So 2015, you know, looked like it had checkered, like a checkered uh, handkerchief a man would put in his breast pocket right here. And they changed it again the year after to have lines on it. And then this is the 2017, I believe. They put out a 2018 bottle. The 2015 version is going for $500 online. Don't pay that, please. Um, I got this for about $150 from Mudasir. Again, it's a tester, no cap. I think he still has more if you're interested. Um, the first time I wore this, I was reminded of Eau Sauvage Parfum from Dior, which is probably one of Demachi's best works, to be honest with you. Uh, but this is sweet. Um, it's one of, I usually do not like sweet fragrances, uh, but uh, I actually really enjoy this, the patchouli vanilla. You know, it's a, it's a different fragrance than Habi Rouge. You might be reminded a little bit of the DNA, but to me, even though it's a flanker, it's a, it's a, it's a modernized type version. I obviously prefer the original because I like older, older, um, I like older style, older fragrances, you know, vintage fashion. Um, but uh, this is still very good for uh, for what it is. Discontinued now. You can still find a bottle if you're interested. It's probably worth grabbing. Next is a very modern Guerlain. And this is Guerlain Homme Intense. This is the Intense in, in the uh, black bottle. This bottle is also discontinued. Guerlain is uh, famous for repackaging, you know, taking their products and putting them in new packaging and jacking the price up and stuff like that. You can see the, the B, the sprayer on this is enormous. It's immense. Uh, it just covers your finger. Uh, but this is Mojito in a bottle is basically what this is. Uh, it is... Um, you know, it is a fragrance that has that boozy accord, but it's it's rum and mojito, and then there's an interesting note of uh, rhubarb in this as well, uh, and mint in the top, but it's not toothpaste mint. This, uh, this is great for hot weather, but also what's interesting about this fragrance is if you live in a cold climate, uh, if you live in England and it's cold not eight, you know, eight months out of the year, unlike Texas, which it's hot eight months out of the year, and, and you're tired of wearing those heavy resinous fragrances and you wanted something, say, a little bit, you know, fresher or, or warmer in a cold climate, this actually works surprisingly well, even though it's, um, it's this fresh mojito type vibe in the cold, you know, if you're looking for kind of a freshie to wear, this would be my uh, recommendation. Okay, next, I have a decant of this only. I wish I could find a full bottle. I can't. So, um, I'm just cherishing this decant. This is um, from the uh, Absolute de Orients. This is Ombre Eternal. And uh, this, this, it's going to keep focusing and unfocusing. Um, this is a very interesting fragrance because this and the next one I'm going to show you both use real ambergris in them. Uh, but but this is a, when, so when it says Ombre, it's it's not really leather per se, or it's not really amber per se, like you would think of an amber fragrance. It's more ambergris, I think, that they're talking about here. Uh, this is basically an animalic ambergris. I prefer this over the one that's coming up. I know the one that's coming up. Uh, most people who are big into the fragrance game will know it's very popular. And um, I, I actually prefer this one if I, if I had to choose one of the two ambergris heavy scents. This just has a little bit more to it that's in my style. Um, that leather note in the base is just uh, cardamom in the top and, um, you know, Lang Lang, orange blossom, peach in the mid just to kind of round it out. But it's that animalic ambergris that really gets me. This is a... Very high quality fragrance. I can see why LVMH discontinued this after only a year or two. I assume it uh, was probably very expensive to uh, to make if they're since they're using real ambergris and Terry Vosser says that they are. So next is uh, in the same collection. I do have a full bottle of this. It's Ensemble Mythique. 
and I'm probably the only person that you will hear say that this reminds them of a Guerlain version of Imitation Man from uh, M. Waj. Um, but this also has that real ambergris in it, but it has this aldehydic rose to it. Um, Rich Mitch says that this reminds him of standing on a beach and just staring out into the vast ocean that just goes on and on and on forever. There's actually a picture uh, in the Fragcom photos on uh, Fragrantica of the bottle sitting there and then the beach in the background. And it does give that, you know, uh, vibe, you know, where it, it gives off this vibe that, uh, you know, there's there's something out there much bigger than you that you're just a small speck in a in a giant universe. It it has this uh, introspective quality to it. You could say it does have saffron saffron because it's part of the um, Absolutes to Orient collection, uh, which is geared, I think, towards the Arabic market, but. Um, Ansans Mythique, very happy to have it. Wish I had a decant of this and a full bottle of Ombre at Turnell, but those are the breaks. Next. Next is um, uh, Guerlain's um, uh, regular line, you could say. Uh, not their niche line, uh, just their uh, designer line. This is Lo Midial, uh, Eau de Parfum. I skipped the EDT. I got the EDP instead. Uh, and again, this is the older bottle. The newer bottles will not have this uh, gray piece right here. It'll be all clear. And rumor is that this whole line is potentially getting chopped. I think if you need it as a designer, don't go buy Y. Uh, or don't go buy Y Parfum, Eau de Parfum. Don't go buy Sauvage. Uh, don't go buy Bleu de Chanel. Get this. Uh, this is what I would probably recommend for someone just starting. Uh, it has that Guerlain quality in it. It is sweet and mass, apparent, mass appealing. Um, and this line is basically known for one note, and that's almond. The note of almond kind of runs throughout these. Uh, this does have this heavy cherry vanilla incense vibe with a little bit of leather in the base. For a designer, this is really good quality stuff. You know, you get that... Uh, you get that Guerlain quality. Not not every house is going to put touches like this. And you know when they when they make a bottle like this, and you you see the attention to detail, you know that they're also paying attention to the fragrance. So that's that's what I think of um, of Lo Midial Eau de Parfum. But there is one other in the line that came out later that I prefer. This is my favorite from the line, and it's the Extreme Lo Midial Extreme. And, you know, these fragrance houses nowadays are, are, are um, you know, they, uh, they do this kind of stuff all the time. They release a fragrance, then they release an eau de parfum, then they release a parfum, an intense, an extreme. In LVMH's uh, Infinite Wisdom, this was only released in, in the European market. It was not released in the American market. And as it turns out, this is the best one of the bunch. So I, of course, had to pay a premium to buy it off of eBay from somebody, but I'm so glad I did. This amps up that um, that leather, and it amps up the tobacco in the base, which I think is one of Terry Vosser's signatures, that tobacco. It still keeps the almond, some pink pepper in the top, um, and they add a note of plum instead of cherry here, but that plum tobacco... In this one, just um, it's 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 still mass appealing, but it's much more interesting to to my nose personally. So if I could only keep one out of the line, this would be my keeper, the extreme. Okay, next is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Um, I would struggle with uh, making a, a top ten list, but I think it would have to be there. This is a vintage bottle, and I paid a lot of money for this of Darby. Uh, I had to give away my right kidney to get one of the, one of these bottles. Uh, so this is um, right after the um, Eagle bottle, uh, but before the um, you know before the new uh, bottle that Terry Vosser did the reform of with the uh, wood around the outside of the bottle. And uh, as you can see, this one has a five-digit batch code to it. So it's an older bottle. And um, it, it did have a cap, which I was very happy about. 
Um, but uh, Darby is one of the best masculines ever made. It was made in uh, the year of my birth, 1985. And um, this is basically uh, Guerlain's take on what was happening in the 80s, in my opinion. Um, it, uh, if you look at the notes, you would think that this is a heavy fragrance. It's got Artemisia, bergamot, mint, lemon in the top, nutmeg, flower, jasmine, rose in the mid, and then oak moss, leather, sandalwood, patchouli, vetiver in the base. I could read those notes. It, you would never be able to guess how this smells. It actually took me a while to pick out the leather after a couple of wears. Um, I get the nutmeg, you know, spicy type vibe from this fragrance for sure. But uh, as far as just wearing something that's masculine, that's a, you know, if I, if I, if you stuck me as a CEO of a Fortune 500 company and said, hey, you've got to go to a board meeting, pick something to wear, this is probably what I would pick, actually, because this is a very mature vibe, but um, it shows elegance, it shows class, it, um, uh, it's just, it's, it's my kind of fragrance. I'd much rather wear this over Lair Blue or uh, Valdina Weed or something like that. As good as those fragrances are, this is much more me. Okay, next is one that uh, I really struggle with, and I thought about selling it after a wear or two, but I figured I better keep it just to give it a chance, especially after watching Eugene's video where he says that uh, this is very true to the DNA of the House of Guerlain. This is uh, Tonka Imperial. This is the only bottle from this collection that I own, um, and I got the good one, I think, with the actual sprayer. Well, you don't have to mess with that terrible bulb thing, that leak that they did. I never bought any of these because of that. But once they came out with these bottles, um, you know, then I decided to go ahead and go for it. Especially now that they're discontinued, I'm, I'm glad to have this. And, um, you know, Tonka Imperial, it's, it's just something that uh, whenever I wore it, I, I really struggled with it. It is a light fragrance, I understand. Um, and the note of Tonka, maybe I'm anosmic to it. Maybe I need to give it some more air, you know, in time now that the bottle has some air in it to breathe. Uh, but, uh, for whatever reason, Tonka Imperial just, uh, really did not do it for me. You know, this breaded bakery Tonka sweet. It's just so sweet is what it is. I just, it's not my thing. I think it would smell great on a woman. Um, again, put me in Derby any day of the week. So Tonka Imperial. Next is another feminine. I enjoy this a little bit more, uh, but uh, believe it or not, I also struggle with um, with this fragrance. And that is uh, Samsara. And this is a vintage bottle, as you can see. This is the uh, Eau de Parfum with the gold cap that uh, actually you don't take off. You twist it to put the sprayer mechanism in place, and then you twist it back to close it. And the reason that I bought this is because supposedly this has real Mysore sandalwood in it, just like the reason I bought Pateau Pour Homme. It has Mysore sandalwood. This is not my type of fragrance. I can appreciate it for what it is. Um, this is a very, again, introspective fragrance. Sandalwood kind of does this to me. It puts me in a, in a very introspective frame of mind but I struggle with the floral element in this. The, the other note outside of sandalwood, sandalwood was supposedly um, overdosed in this fragrance at 30%, which is huge for a sandalwood, especially for such a uh, expensive in ingredient. This was right towards the end in the 1980s when you know real Mysore sandalwood could still be used. Now, of course, they've substituted it for you know whatever they, they use nowadays as a synthetic alternative. Um, but it's the Jasmine, and it is the Lang Lang that I really struggle with in this fragrance. It just kind of gives me a headache every time I wear it. I appreciate it. I'm glad to have this bottle, uh, but again, not, not a daily driver for me. Next is a fragrance that I believe is an overlooked fragrance. I actually have a backup bottle of this, believe it or not. Um, and this is a fragrance called Coriolan. Coriolan was a uh, Roman general, and this this uh, video would go hours if we went into the details, but it is very interesting to me that uh, Guerlain picked Coriolan. 
uh, because basically, in a nutshell, Coriolan raged against the establishment that they were, you know, destroying Rome. Um, and uh, the fact that he named his final fragrance that LVMH allowed him to create Coriolan, this was a bust. Uh, rumor is that he actually started working on this the same year he started working on uh, on Darby. And so this came out in the late 90s, 1998, 1999, I believe. Uh, and then it was quickly discontinued a year or two later because it never sold. This is a sheaf, which again is, is my favorite category, one of my favorite category uh, fragrances. But this is a this is a bright fragrance. It has sage and lemon and petty grain and neroli, but it gives off the, the main note really that I think throws people off is fennel. This has a fennel-like smell. Um, but in the heat, which in Texas I get to wear this a lot, in the heat, this is, um, here's my backup, by the way. Um, this is, this works fantastic because of those brighter notes. It does have oak moss, vetiver, leather, patchouli, benzoin in the base. It has heavier materials in the base. Um, they repackaged this into a fragrance called, uh, Lame Dune Heros, I believe. Um, and that is now also discontinued. The Spirit of a Hero or something like that. Um, the soul of a hero, but this uh, this gunmetal uh, flask is just absolutely one of the most beautiful bottles you will ever see. Um, and this is not metal, obviously it's plastic, but uh, it opens up like this. And there's the sprayer. There's the Guerlain B. The bottle is just impeccable. I, I really miss bottles from the old days where they took their time and created something unique instead of just sticking it in a, you know, Listerine bottle and calling it a day. But, you know, that's what mass, uh, mass production will give you. Okay. I saved the last, these last two last on purpose because these are two of my favorite masculines to wear. Uh, the first is Probably my favorite masculine Guerlain of all time. Uh, and if you know what's left out, you'll be able to guess what it is. It is Heritage. And uh, this is uh, Jean-Paul Guerlain's um, magnum opus, the greatest thing he ever created for men, in my opinion. Uh, this has this... Um, I heard AC from the channel Smells Good say this has a rock star patchouli in it, and I would agree. But this has something like 26 notes. So if you like complex fragrances, which I do, uh, God, I love this fragrance so much. Um, it would be an it would be a waste for me to read off the notes to you. You would you would have no clue, you know what it's what it smells like. But it starts kind of smelling like the bottom of a forest floor. And then it, it evolves, the patchouli comes out, the amber, and, um, you know, this does have a floral heart. It has carnation, it has balsam fir. Uh, one, of, uh, one of my favorite masculines of all time, hands down, bar none. I, I bought this first, and this is the vintage, the five-letter uh, batch code with the gold cap. I went and bought the giant backup the biggest backup that i could get a 200 ml splash and you can see this looks like a pendulum let me make sure this bottle's closed before i do this this is supposed to look like a pendulum swinging uh is uh is is the design of this particular bottle and um it's just it's just absolutely gorgeous same you can kind of see this here as well uh and then i learned that Roja came out with his own take on Guerlain's heritage, surprise, surprise, called Danger. Um, and this time, I don't like the Roja more. This is a $500 bottle for 50 ml. Um, it's uh, scandalous. But it, it turns up the cumin a little bit. It is a little bit more dirty. He tried to do the same thing he did with Diagalev. I don't think he succeeded as well with Danger. I enjoy Danger. There's Ambergris here where there's none here. But for me, the original wins out this time. And this ties other Guerlains together from the past and the future. And what I mean by that, speaking of the future, and this is what I would call, this is the final fragrance I'm going to show you, by the way, and what I would also call the last great Guerlain. And this is L'Instant de Guerlain. 
This is the Eau de Parfum, the Extreme Lidge, as it's uh, affectionately known in the fragrance community. And I love this fragrance so much that I overpaid for a backup with the Black Rim, which I didn't have to do. These are basically the same fragrance, but again, when you love something so much, sometimes you do stupid things. And um, so I have both now. I have a backup in my collection, which I'm very proud of. But the reason I said Heritage was such a pivotal Guerlain is because it foreshadowed the coming of Lion Stomp de Guerlain. This has cacao um, and star anise, but it also has that patchouli from Heritage. And this is made by a, a woman named Beatrice uh, Piquet, who is no longer with us, unfortunately, but she produced The Last Great Guerlain in 2005. Uh, and this is one of my favorite fragrances to wear, uh, out of, out of Guerlain. Heritage, this, Darby, those are my kind of fragrances. Sange, um, you know, Habi Rouge, the, the, uh, obviously Guerlain has such a long history. They have so many fragrances you can never own and wear everything. You have to kind of plant your flag somewhere, but, um, I hope that's kind of given you a, uh, an idea. And like I said in some of my previous videos, the reason that I'm doing this is to show off my um, my love of fragrances to, to you guys. And also, if any of these you want to get in-depth reviews on, I will start doing individual reviews. Please just let me know down in the comments, and I'll try to start there. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for watching these family portraits. If you have any feedback, uh, please leave it in the comments. I like uh, interacting with everybody, and uh, we'll see you guys soon next time. Bye-bye.